Welcome back YouTube, it's uh, been a long time since I've done a video, I know, um, been away, been busy, work's been hectic, Christmas, everything really, honestly I've got no excuse, I probably should have done a video ages ago, but I haven't, so I've got a lot to cover, there's stuff that I got from CEX, um, using credit, which I don't think I covered in the last video, I can't even remember when I did the last video, um, Events that I went to, going back as far as Blackpool, which I haven't covered. Obviously, gifts for Christmas. Stuff I've been doing on YouTube, not on my own channel. Loads of stuff, really. So, I'm going to try and be a little bit more relaxed in my videos from now on. I mean, I, think, I felt I was pretty relaxed before, but you know what? I'm going to try and be as relaxed as possible. I might swear. I'm not really bothered about that anymore. If I swear, I'll swear. If I don't, I don't. So... Where should we start? CEX. We'll start with CEX. I'll go back to CEX with something else later to do with the pickups. I've got loads and loads of pickups. But CEX, basically the back end of the boot sale in season. I started doing what um, I know Lewis Wish Wash does a lot of, and obviously Stu to the UK do a lot of. Buying all the crap for the Xbox 360, the Wii and stuff like that. Trading it in, getting some vouchers, getting some what I want. Now, I can't remember if I covered this in the last video or not, so I might be going over old ground, but basically I've got enough credit to upgrade my uh, PS4 Slim to a PS4 Pro, and I managed to get enough credit to get hold of one of these, which you've probably all seen, Nintendo Switch. Don't get as much game time as it like, although I'm quite busy with my evening job at the moment at the Leisure Centre, so I do take it in there occasionally. And I did get some games with it. Yeah, I bought a couple of games to go along with the Switch. Um, Mario Kart 4. Mario Kart 4? What the fuck? Mario Kart 8. And Super Mario Odyssey. And I've got Football Manager on there. Because obviously we all know I'm into my football. So I play a lot of that. Uh, I did have some stuff bought for the Switch for Christmas. Which I'll get to when I do them pickups. So yeah, basically, just trading a load of stuff, got myself up to around five, six hundred quids worth of vouchers, upgraded some of my equipment, and that's what CX is great for. I will be doing a lot more of that with the upcoming boot sale season. Touching on the uh, PS4 Pro, um, I'm experimenting with something tomorrow. I'm going to get myself, because I've got a 32-inch TV in my games room currently. It's not 4K, it's just HD. Uh, I'm going to get I think it's a 31.5 inch BenQ EW sum up numbers uh, 4K HDR monitor gaming monitor tomorrow so hopefully that's going to make the PS4 Pro look brilliant I'm getting it as dirt cheap price the only problem is I've got to drive to Wrexham to fetch it but you know needs must it's a cheap deal and it's brand new in box so hopefully that's going to improve my experience on the Pro. Um, what shall I do next? Events. Blackpool. God, Blackpool is so long ago now. Um, first time I've ever been to Blackpool. First time I've ever really been to an event where I'm not stood behind the stall. Other than the very first mini revival that me and Antarp went to. Blackpool was brilliant. I wish I'd stay for the two nights. But obviously with commitments for things that I had on on Sunday. I couldn't I just stayed for the one evening luckily I don't think Liam had lasted two nights anyway so you know after everything he got up to he didn't even make his own bed he ended up sleeping in the uh, foyer of the oh, what's the name of the fucking hotel Norbreck in the Norbreck so you know I've heard the rooms ain't great in the Norbreck so I can't imagine what the uh, foyer was like to sleep in I stayed in a hotel called the Regal which was just up the road from the Norbreck in, um, it's not quite Blackpool, it's just outside Blackpool, but it's really close to the Norbreck, if that makes sense. And I think I bought the average age of people staying in there down by about 20 years when I went in there. But it was a very nice hotel, probably a bit posh for me, uh, but I did enjoy myself. Got to see loads of people, meet loads of people who I hadn't met before. No one knew I was going because, obviously, I'm in a little WhatsApp group with several people who I'll mention later on. I basically, Stu would give me that much shit about me not being able to come say my missus wouldn't let me, which is couldn't be further from the truth. It was just that I didn't know if I could make it, whether I was running my kids' team on the Saturday, but luckily we hadn't got a fixture because it was uh, 
did we have a fixture or did I get someone else to run it? I can't remember now. Anyway, what happened is is I finally booked it up a month before and I just led Stu along and kept saying I weren't coming, made him think I weren't coming and then he spotted my stupid ponytail a mile off when he turned up. But there's people like Gareth from the Man Cave who I first saw when I got there and uh, Scott Glory Hunter. They were like shocked to see me there as well as Big Mike. Uh, Pete, who we all know as old school variety face. I picked him up from Burton on Trent with my mate Liam. He'd had to keep it a secret, which he hated doing, but he kept it a secret and he was well worth it. And as I say, had a great crack. Um, I did pick up some games from there. Let me have a look. Who's that pushing something through my door? Um, yeah, I think I got these. These I traded with a lad who is on YouTube and I forgot to look up his channel before I've done this video. I think he had three games off me in my bag of stuff. And I had these two, um, Spider-Man on the Master System, which is a game I used to have as a kid, used to play, and Primal Raid on the Mega Drive, which, two games I needed, he needed three of mine, I weren't bothered, man, just swap it around, I think they were N64 games, which as you know, I've been gaming my N64 stuff, I had some stuff off Pete as well, uh, so let me sort that out, I think there was that, that, and it was definitely that, yeah, um, bought... Saturn game off peak, clockwork night, game ain't got. Saturn, that's not getting a lot of love at the moment, but I do need to get that set up. A game which I really enjoy and didn't even know was on the snares, Arkanoid. I mean, I used to play a lot of this on the Amstrad back in the day. It's Breakout, whatever you want to call it, Arkanoid. And then he said, look, if there's anything else you want, just have. So I needed Lemmings. And Striker, I believe there's a World Cup version of this, which I used to have as a kid, where you play indoor football. And I used to spend hours playing this. So, yeah, that was Blackpool. What event was next? Bristol, Bristol Gaming Market, the second ever one. Heard mixed reviews from people who attended, people who sold. I did really well personally selling. I did well the first time, I did well the second time. I just think it's one of them, it's look at the draw sometimes, who comes to your store, if you've got more than one item on the one bundle it, you sell it. I know I did really well at Biff's store, and I'll be doing that event again. It wasn't quite as busy as, say, the one in the summer, it did seem to die off, but so did Doncaster, which I also did a few weeks later. Like It was almost like, because it was coming to Christmas, people come in, got what they wanted, and they got other shit to do, whether they were going shopping or something like that, you know what I mean? So... I did really well at Bristol, uh, and I think Lewis didn't, but yeah, he did better at me at Doncaster, so it's just swings and roundabouts, I suppose, I suppose if you've got what people want kind of thing, oh, I've just spotted another game that I had off Pete, Battletoads on the Mega Drive, loose cart, I want it to play, so I'm not bothered, um, so yeah, that was Doncaster and Bristol, both gaming markets, so and both, Mark helped me out with Doncaster, Shifted a few of his high-end PS2 titles. Yes, there are high-end PS2 titles. Great day. He helped me and Anton load. And all I said, look, man, keep me watered and fed. Sell wherever you want, make wherever you want. And I think he did all right in the end. Uh, bought himself some Mega Drive games. So I think Mark's going for uh, the Mega Drive collection. So that was great. Um, sandwiched in between, I believe, was Revival, Mini Revival. That was at like a little community centre sort of thing. The only way I can describe it was a community centre in Warsaw. Tiny compared to the main one, but I think Craig says more as of like, look, let's all get together before Christmas. I'm obviously there as a seller, so I made a few quid. But it's getting to see people like Stu, people like Gareth, people like uh, Mark come down, Pete, Mike, Mike's mate, um, Liam helped me out, Aunt Harper helped me out. Basically, everyone who I get on with in the gaming community was there. We all got to have a chat. Dylan Craven come down. I believe he's from up Scouse Land way somewhere. First time I ever met him. A few weeks before, he'd been giving me some shit on the stream, so I reminded him of that. Um, Scott was there. Glory Hunter. Rob, Stu's mate, who's always there. Um, and there's obviously people... I'm going to forget people. There's people I'm going to forget. But basically, people who I see... Three, four times a year, people who I chat with on a weekly basis, I got to see before Christmas. I sold Gareth the mintiest mass system box you're ever going to see. He was happy with the price. We all had a good deal. I sold Pete Afterburner LCD game thing. It was just good. Um, 
I have also sold, I haven't sold it yet, but it's an agreement sale to Mr. Bad's Paw. I'm not going to tell you what it is, it's just a really, really rare Spectrum game. I'm not going to reveal what it is, I'm going to wait till I actually deliver it to him. He has it in person, he can reveal it to everyone. Um, I had one pickup, I believe, oh, two pickups from uh, Revival. One was off Stu. Stu always brings a bag of tat to sell on my store if he's not selling himself, which I'm more than happy to do. It's different stock on my store, and if Stu can make a few crews there, great. I think he sold Mark a couple of games, and he actually gave me this one. Uh, I needed it. Smash TV on the Mega Drive. It's another one that will go with my Mega Drive collection there, which is starting to grow, so it might need more than that shelf that's behind me. Um, and also pick up at a range pre-revival. Uh, Leo runs Saw Thumbs Retro. Put this on his Facebook page. Obviously, Saw Thumbs does 99% of the events that I do. I said to him, look, Lee, I want that. Rather than you posting it, me paypal it, if you can bring it to the event, I'll buy it. And he was like, yeah, that's sound. He said, I'm not doing that event. He wasn't doing Revival. He was doing Comic Con. But his wife was doing a stall at Revival. So, like, he'd spread over the two events because the one was in Birmingham one was in Warsaw. And I was like, yeah, that's great. And uh, I think he had it on. I want to say it on for either 50 or 55. And in the end, he said, look, 45 sound with me. It's a uh, Super Mario Bros. Game Watch. Now, this has a lot of nostalgia for me. I had one of these as a kid. And if you go back to one of my videos two, three years ago, I did five things that I wanted to add to my collection in a year. Well, obviously, I failed that because I didn't add it in a year. I've added it like three years down the line. But this was one of those items. And these can go for 70 to 80 quid loose. Talking over a £100 box, this one. And all, all I remember is I had this as a kid and it was really competitive between me, my brother and my dad to play it. So to add that back into my collection has a lot of sentimental value for me. So that was something else I added. Uh, so that's the event really. As I say, next year I'll probably be doing both Doncasters, both Bristol's. Obviously Revival, I've already booked my tables for Revival. I've got to pay them come the end of the week. And I'm looking to branch out and do more because next season I'm not going to be doing the coaching of the kids' teams next season so I'm going to have more time for myself on a weekend. That's not the reason I'm doing it. That's kind of like a personal reason for me why I want to step away from kids' football at the moment. Nothing to do with the kids, nothing to do with myself, just the whole atmosphere of uh, kids' football really in general. I'm not enjoying it at the moment so I think it's time for me to take a back seat. Um, <clears throat> so... I'll move on to pickups and I'll start with what I picked up in a bundle off Spock. Was it Spock or Facebook page? Basically, you might just be able to see it there. There's a boxed Asian PAL Mega Drive. Uh, I've got the actual Mega Drive down there. That's the box. And it comes with a bundle of games. These aren't all the games. These are the games that I'm keeping that I need. So, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, another one I haven't got. I mean, some of these titles are having, I'm adding to my collection. I thought they're like titles I probably thought I should have had on it already, but I'm probably approaching 150 Mega Drive games now with these ones, so I'm not doing too bad. F22, this is never getting played, this is sitting on a shelf. Mega Bomberman, now unfortunately the cartridge is fucking smashed inside it. I checked like the top four games that were in the bundle. And they were all sound, so I didn't check all the rest. But this looks like some fuckers took a chunk out of it. So, obviously I'm going to have to change the cart on that. But for what I paid for the bundle, I think I paid 30 quid. So, with the Mega Drive box, and I think there was about 12 games, and I've kept these. Street Racer. <sighs> and Donald Duck. Summit Mallard. Mutt, Mal, Mutt. Whatever, man. Something mallard. It's quite a hard game to get. Not a hard game to go, but it's not a cheap game. Um, so, yeah, I'll pick, that was one of my pickups. Um, I got this from a boot sale. I actually. It was one of the last boot sales of the year. I rung Stu because this guy was selling Mega Drive tiles a pound. And I know Stu needed some sports tiles, and there was loads in there, so I just went through to see what he needed. And I think at the time he just bought this, but I needed it anyway, so he weren't going to get it off me. But uh, 3D Balls, or Balls 3D, Battle of the Balls. How many times can you say Balls without it sounding rude? 
basically I got that for a quid so that's going into my own collection um, then I've been I will go back to CEX I ordered six games of CEX I believe let's check yes six games of CEX I've kept three three went back I'll cover these the three I'm keeping first loose cart super metroid no issues there super ghouls and ghosts again loose cart and lost vikings although it's got that bloody permanent marker I'll try and get that off I kept them three they were fine the three that I sent back are gauntlet 4 on the mega drive got no manual and gauntlet on the mass system also got no manual I would have probably kept them if I hadn't have had to take this third title back and it was Super Castlevania on the SNES. Now the reason I had to take it back is one, they'd sent me an NTSE card, which I believe CX aren't even meant to stock. Two, it looked fake as hell, like really fake, like the label just didn't look centered, it didn't look right, it didn't even have the right weight to the cartridge. So basically I took that back, exchanged it, got my credit back. I did say to them, I said, what do you, you know, you shouldn't really be putting that back in circulation. That shouldn't be going out to anyone. That should be you cutting your losses on someone in your stalls not being trained how to exchange games properly. But that's the swings and roundabouts to CEX. You know, this year I've had a Switch and a fucking PS Pro of them. But I have been sent some shit games by them as well. So you just have to play the roulette like everyone else says. And that's basically the way it goes with CEX. I have got some more credit. Um... I'm looking to get some more games with it. Um, the channel in general will be getting probably going to be the same. I'm not even going to bullshit you. I've bought a better mic. I don't know how to set it up yet. I've bought some extra wires to hook, hook my uh, camera up to a new laptop that I bought. It's not a new laptop. It's a second-hand laptop. But it's got a better processor than my new laptop that I bought, if that makes sense. Because it was just making rendering videos an absolute ball. Because like, the processor was dogging it. So I bought a second hand laptop off eBay just before Christmas. It's got 8 gigabyte of RAM and a quad core processor. Basically it's going to be a load easier for me to do these videos and upload them where it doesn't take the whole of my life to do so. So that's that. Um, final thing on the pickups. I have been buying some stuff off eBay. Um, the first things that I bought were these. Again, same with the Super Mario thing where I said in that video I want to be adding things in the next like year. Well, I never got round to it. And this uh, Turtles, uh, it's not Konami handhelds. Is it Tiger? It's not Tiger, it's Konami ones. Hornby Makey. I had this again as a kid. Again, it was massively competitive between me and my brother. So, I mean, obviously the box is battered. But I wanted it to play. And for what I paid for the two, you pay for this loose, if that makes sense. So, this bottom of the ninth, that's going to be getting sold on because I don't know, I'm not into baseball. It's not for me. So, that'll be sold on. And this one will be being kept. And obviously, it's got to be a packaging, so it's not too bad. And the second gaming thing I bought off of eBay was this R Type Collector's Edition R Type and R Type 3 are in here, I believe. I have opened it, it was sealed one ago, but what's the point of keeping it sealed? Obviously you got the cartridge in there, nice black cartridge. I'm not getting all the gubbins out, because I've already fucking dropped something on the floor. My certificate of authenticity. This is issue 1578 of 2800. I think I paid 25 quid for this, I think they're going around 30, 35. So it weren't a bad price. It was, as I say, it was sealed when I got it, but obviously I wanted to see what was inside, so I unsealed it. And the rest of the things are going to be presents now. Some of them aren't going to be in here. Because I had a feeling I got bought some t-shirts and stuff. There's a picture probably going to be put up on Instagram. But I'll just cover what's next to me. Uh, Missy's got me a controller for the Switch. Super Mario one. Uh, I would have liked a wireless one, but, you know... Maybe next Christmas. Uh, she got me some decals, Space Invader ones. They'll get stuck all over my new laptop and stuff, probably around the room. Switch carry case, which obviously means I can take my Switch to work with me, so I can play Football Manager while I'm at work. 
Um, there was birthday as well, man. I mean, this goes far back as my birthday, and there's probably stuff in there that I probably should show. So it's got me a couple of games: Resident Evil that I can play on my VR, and Crash Bandicoot. Uh, as I mean, Crash Bandicoot's still sealed. I've not had time. I've been putting a lot of hours into Call of Duty Blackout. I know a lot of people frown upon the Call of Duty franchise, but I like a bit of competitive gaming, hence why I'm looking at getting the monitor. I play with my brother on a weekly basis. It's the only interaction we probably have anymore, so I enjoy it. You know, you can hate Con and FIFA all you want, but fuck you, I enjoy it. Uh, I also got bought this for, by my missus brother for uh, my birthday. Um, the Nostalgia Nerd, Retro Tech, I believe he does YouTube. I can't say I watch his channel. I've had a quick flick through, it's not massively in depth, I mean I've got a million books behind me that probably tell me the same thing but it's a nice thing to have on the shelf and that's probably where it'll end up, so that was a present, um, and that was it, you know what, I've probably picked up more stuff, I probably have, but this is what happens when you can't be asked to do videos regular, so that's the kind of thing that happens, but saying that, I say I haven't been doing regular videos but if you went over to 2 to uks channel, every other Friday, we do a live stream called Taking Retro Liberties. There's me, Stu obviously who hosts it, Gareth from the Man Cave, Big Mike Houlihan, um, without further ado, Retro, Mark Burnt Out Culture, and Pete Old School Variety Face, as well as a few guests, Addy Sneaker Freaks popped in, Woodlands popped in, Lewis occasionally sits at the camera and says three words over three hours. And it's a good crack. We cover some quite controversial topics. The others often get pissed a lot and get a bit leery. It can devolve into chaos. But it's good fun. You know, we, we don't shy away from nothing. Any subject that's asked was in the chat, we'll answer. We set our own questions. It can be quite controversial. It can be diversive. But, you know, we're not all going to agree on everything. All of us in the chat don't agree. So the people watching aren't going to agree. But... At least we tackle the questions head on. We're not as afraid to shy away, should I say. So, yeah, so I've been doing that. I think we've done four or five now, three hours. So that's probably, if you had all that time up that I'm involved in that, it's probably more than I've done on my own channel. Uh, I've appeared in a couple of videos. I think I've appeared in one for Gareth, done a bit of a cameo for him. And I did one for Pete at Revival. I did a cameo and I did uh, Who Are You for his channel, Old School Variety Face, in case you forget it. So I have been active, I am about, I'm in the process of setting up, look I could probably do live streams now, it's whether I can be bothered, I might start doing live streams in the future, I might not, it all depends, because as I say often I game with my brother, or I game with my stepson, so it's whether they want to be involved sort of thing, I wouldn't want to add them to something that they didn't know they were really involved in, and uh, but if I get a chance to stream on my own I might stream. But it's probably going to be Call of Duty, or what else do I play? Call of Duty mainly, Fortnite, you know, I'm sad. I like these Battle Royale games, I like the idea of being the best out of 100. Not that I'm the best out of 100 very often, but I like doing it. Um, so yeah, so I might do that. I have got all the facilities. I've been adding all these little bits of stuff, because work's been alright this year, man. I've worked hard, I've, you know, I'm not taking out cash that I can't afford to. I've been adding little bits to my games room, to my channel, so you know, it makes life easier for me, I mean I've got two flipping, and them snowball mics up there, that I don't know how to fucking set up, I've got it around to me, I've got a snare for them, I've got a stand, it didn't cost me a lot, because if you know me, I search around for the cheapest deal on eBay, and I'll sniper it at the last minute, so, they're just little things that, if I ever get the time to, will make the channel better, I mean I've got a beer fridge here, that's full, bloody strong bow, dark fruits that the kids bought me from the football team and some other ciders, I ain't had a chance to drink it, I've been busy, um, but yeah that's how it is, I mean this Friday, tomorrow, if I get this video up today, if not this fucking little bit of the video is pointless, um, we're going to be doing the stream, taking retro liberties, I believe it's on Gareth's channel, the man cave tomorrow, because um, Stu can't do it tomorrow so we're going to go through Gareth's channel, probably start between 9, 10-ish, get yourselves over there, give me some abuse, give the others some abuse, ask us some questions, have the crack, have the banter, that's what it's there for, uh, also in case you haven't watched, 
Um, bearded man child, Craig. Yeah, his name's Craig. He's a little short fella. He's been doing tubes at 10 and calling out people who are missing. Well, I'm not fucking missing anymore, you found me. In fact, you haven't done tubes at 10 for ages. So what's the point in starting something, calling people out, and then not doing it? Pull your finger out, Craig. Get tubes at 10 back on. It was the funniest thing on YouTube for the two or three episodes you've done here. Now you've jacked it in. What's that all about? So, yeah, Craig. Tubes at 10. Check him out. I'll put a link to most channels that I've talked about. Gareth's channel, obviously, so you can watch the stream in the link below. We'll be covering probably some sensitive topics tomorrow. The hot topic at the moment is Patreon. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it classed as e-begging? Can it be classed as e-begging? What is classed as e-begging? All you lot need to know is this channel will be kept free for you lot. I don't want your fucking money. Well, I do. If I'm selling you something at an event, buy some off me. Or... Don't send it so the tax man can buy me. Slip me a fiver if you like my channel. Or buy me a beer. I'll be happy with that. So the tax man can't find it. Keep it shh. Other than that guys. I don't know when I'll be back. I might be back tomorrow. Well I'm obviously going to be back tomorrow on the fucking street. But I might be back. Sooner. Or it might be another long break again. So until then. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep commenting. Subscribing. Whatever you want to do. See you on the next video, guys. Take it easy.